Imagine the following, right? It's just a usual day at work. You're done working, you go home, right? And as usual, you take the ferry to pass the canal. And suddenly, the, the, the captain of the ferry says, Attention, please. We have to go to an airplane in the water to pick up passengers. What would you do? How would you react? <clears throat> Probably your first initial thought is like, hey, uh, a plane in the water, uh, that usually does not happen, right? But so, okay, you pass the shock. What do you do? Do you stand waiting for being there? Or are you going to take action? What do you do? Well, that event happened <clears throat> on the 15th of January 2009. US Airways 1549 <clears throat> left LaGuardia Airport, struck, was struck by a bird strike, and landed in the Hudson. Yeah. And so uh, here you see a picture of the airplane in the water. So Janus Crumbs was in that very. And what he did, he picked up his phone, took a picture, and posted it on Twitter. Yeah? That is a possible reaction to this event. But actually, that picture that you see here was the, also the picture that the media used. It was the first picture that was made of this event. Yeah? So, Victor Crumbs, uh, uh, Janice Crumbs, posted this tweet, tweet, was retweeted by his friends, and it spread like wildfire. <clears throat> So what happened here? It is a miraculous thing that happened. Um, first of all, the plane landed in the water, right? That's, that's a miracle. Uh, the second thing is, a, a, a just a regular passenger on a ferry becomes a news reporter. He posts this thing on Twitter, and the media picks it up. Yeah? And, and so there was also a very defining moment for Twitter, because before, Twitter was seen as a tool to pass around messages like, I'm doing this, I'm going there. Uh, but now it had, a, it had a serious dimension to it. Yeah? <clears throat> so this changes completely the way newsrooms work. If you think about newsrooms like in the past, then you would typically get pictures like this. Like this is the, the 60s, 70s. These are telex machines. People would write a message on this telex machine, and then, well, news reporters would wait. Yeah, they, would, they would wait for news. If you now look at a newsroom, it somewhat looks like this. It's, they have multiple screens, they have many information sources. Uh, there's the internet, there's the phone, there's, there's Twitter, Facebook, uh, whatever, whatnot. It's, it, you, you can go crazy. <clears throat> so you see that news reporting itself has changed due to, well, advances in ICT, but also be because we become news reporters ourselves. So you can imagine that they have to organize differently as well. <clears throat> for example, for, for planned events, it's, it's very easy to get, uh, let's say, coverage of the event. Let's say here, there is a, there is a, there is a cycling tournament so you see all these news reporters with their cameras just fighting for the first picture. But what do you do in these events? Like, okay, um, <clears throat> a disaster. You can't, well, you can, you can plan for a disaster, but news reporters don't do that typically, yeah? <laughs> and they want to have the first coverage. Or maybe large-scale events uh, where a lot of people gather. Where should you be located in case something happens? Yeah. So the idea is then, okay, can we now, <clears throat> in these events, see what's happening? This is we becoming a news reporter. iPads, phones, tablets. We become a news reporter because we have mobile devices and we share that information. So the, the, the idea is that, okay, if we share that information, let's say on Twitter, can we find events on Twitter before even the media picks up? And that's what I want to talk about. That's the real-time reporter. 
your friend in early warning systems for news trends and events. <clears throat> so what, would, what did we do? Um, the idea was actually simple, but uh, to carry it out takes a lot of work. Um, so you have the Netherlands, and in the Netherlands we post like 6 million tweets per day. Okay? So now, how do you get those Dutch tweets? That takes a lot of linguistic uh, uh, research to find out how our language is built up and on what keywords you have to filter to get Dutch tweets. Out of this whole box of tweets that, you know, in many languages. So that's what we did. And then you look at the system, what kind of tweets do you get? Well, you can see uh, if, if you are uh, like in a time like this, a lot of high school students are posting a lot of jokes and uh, a, a lot of uh, messages are passing around Twitter that are not newsworthy. So we built a spam filter around that. That was the second step. But then, well, Twitter has like 140 characters, so uh, it's, it's not poetry that they, people write, so they, they write in different styles. So they use synonyms, uh, the abbreviate term, so you need to do analysis on that as well and cluster those tweets that are related to each other. There was another step. <clears throat> and then you have something that grows because you have clusters, and so you measure the speed at which things develop, acceleration, are they developing faster? But you also want to do trend, uh, like, like trend detection. <clears throat> because every evening people tweet, uh, well, sleep well, good night. Every morning people tweet, well, good morning. That takes a peak, you see a peak appearing. Well, that's not news, right? Um, that's very predictable, actually. Uh, every Friday the voice of Holland uh, peaks up, right? So that's not news. <clears throat> so you have to estimate as well, okay, what terms do you think are going to peak? And if you can predict that well, that's not news. So we built that in as well. And then uh, we clustered it, uh, we built a framework around it, and it looked like this, a dashboard for real-time news detection. So, so do understand, trending topics is not news. That's old news, because it's trending. Yeah? So we want to detect news before it even trends. Yeah? So as soon as we see that things pick up, that might be newsworthy. So um, we've tested in, in a newsroom, Nupert and all, and yes, it indeed works. Yeah? They uh, get messages from our dashboard <coughs> that they either would not have detected at all or would, would, have, would have detected later. And uh, let me give you a demo of the dashboard, okay? So uh, remember this hashtag, because I'm going to ask you to do me a favor later. So uh, let's switch to the dashboard. Here it is. So this is what, uh, well, the Dutch society right now is twittering about. We, every five seconds we get real time the Dutch tweets. Um, the whole procedure that I stepped through is carried out here in every five seconds. And you see, well, Nobel Prize of Peace. If we click on that, uh, then you can see uh, that the Nobel Prize of Peace is being uh, is, is tweeted about, yeah? and it's taking a trend. If you click back, <coughs> and we can go into detail. Oh, well, now some. Uh, uh, then you can see the chart, and you can see here. See here, it, it picks up, and there are se several terms clustered here: Nobel Prize, Peace, Winning. OPCW, uh, and, and so we are here, and uh, you know, probably when it's somewhere there, it's trending, so people will detect it as a trend. But we want to be here. So uh, uh, if we go back to the dashboard, then I would like to ask people to get their mobile phones. If you have a Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> So, so this is a big test. So uh, could you Twitter something about this talk on the, the TEDx20U hashtag? 
And let's see if it pops up. Or people are still busy, I guess. I see here something with Twitter. Maybe we can click on that to see what it's about. Where did it go? <clears throat> can we click on that one, the Twitter? Uh, uh, people in the back office. <laughs> ah, there it is. Science meets society. <laughs> so now you can see, I mean, here, there was. <laughs> so TEDx Twitter is also happy that you Twittered on their hashtag, right? So, uh, so now you see, so. Of course, this is not the end of the story. Uh, newsrooms are using it, but we have a vision. Um, we want to continue and, and take this to the next level. What if we detect the trends? So here we just have keywords. What if we can really define a topic? And then also, when you have a topic, find background information on that topic. And then maybe prepare a news article in advance. Yeah? So you ha we have a dashboard, people tweet, and in the background, a news article is in preparation. So when you click, you get background information on the topic. <clears throat> well, that's the next level that we want to take this dashboard to. And of course, if you guys all keep on tweeting, we will get there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>